Welcome to Psychology the Daf. We are in Gemara Erevin, Daf Samach Zion. So, this Gemara tells us something interesting about Rav Chizda and Rav Sheshes, that when they would encounter each other, Rav Chizda on sif v'say, mimas niyasad Rav Sheshes. Rav Chizda, his lips would tremble when uh, out of fear of Rav Sheshes' incredible bakiyas about prices and Mishnayas and, and all that. Now, it happens to be Rav Sheshes was blind, so his primary method of study was oral, and he also was gifted in his memory that he was a great sage and was able to do all this study and uh, teaching from his memory. Now, but Rav Sheshes, he would tremble when he would meet Rav Chizda because of Rav Chizda's incredible analytic insight and his sharpness. So we see these two different types of, of learners, these two different types of sages, uh, each one with a certain ability. We have seen Gemaras before like that that comment on that. But there's an interesting Gemara in Bavakama, and in particular, a Pesach Hanayim's Pshat in the Gemara in Bavakama, and how he ties in this Gemara to this Gemara in Bavakama. Now, the Gemara in Bavakama tells us that the Hasidim Harishonim, the early pietists, the people that were really very careful about doing the right thing, they would take their thorns and, and glass shards and they would put it in their fields and stick it down three tfachim deep so that it would not interfere with the plow. It also describes how Rav Sheshis, who was also pious, he would do something different. Now, perhaps because it was, he was blind, so he couldn't do such an elaborate procedure, um, he would throw his, his thorns into the fire, and Rava would toss them into the uh, Tigris River. Now, interestingly enough, uh, the Pesach and I learns the entire Gemara as a metaphor. So basically, the, the field is the field of study, and the Gemara and analysis is considered like a field. It, it gives forth fruit, it's broad, it's deep. And so he's, the Gemara is talking about what to do when one has distracting and troubling thoughts. And in particular, two types of thoughts, the thorns and the glass shards. So the thorns represent, um, you know, depressing, anxiety kinds of thoughts. And the glass shards represent arrogance that also distracts you. So what they did was, they kind of did it the hard way. They just stuffed it down deep, deep into the earth, three tvachim below, so it wouldn't interfere with their regular, everyday thoughts that they're having in terms of trying to really study and analyze the sugya. On the other hand, Rav Sheshis and Rava would have to do something different. And here's where um, the Pesach Hanayim gets quite original. He says that Essentially, Rav Sheshis, again, as we noted, uh, was blind, and so he studied Valpet. So his general study was more Bikias. It was more superficial, not obviously anywhere near superficial, as to not qualify him as a great Rav teacher, Dayan, Posik, whatever it was, uh, position that he occupied, but it was relatively superficial. And so if he encountered difficulties that he couldn't get past the thoughts and they were distracting him and he couldn't stuff them down. The suggestion was to try something totally different, a different mode of learning altogether. And what the Pesach Hanayim says is that he would go from Bikias to going deep into learning. And that would be represented with the fire. The, the deep fire would be the, the, the passionate, um, intense analysis of the sugya. And by changing what he was doing, it would be novel and refreshing to him and he would be motivated and be able to concentrate. On the other hand, sometimes you have people that already study very deeply, and their regular mode of learning is through pilpul, so what are they supposed to do? So here the Pesach and I'm says that the Gemara advocates studying agada, which is uh, pleasing and entertaining, and that's represented in uh, what is described that Rava would throw his thorns into into the river. You know, that's like something broad and expansive and wavy. So uh, the other tactic is for one who normally learns very much be'in and pilpal, and they're finding their thoughts are, are, are distracting and they can't push them down. They should learn something more engaging like Agada to, to motivate them and help them concentrate. And, you know, we've mentioned this in other places in our discussions about the daf, but it's so important to realize again how the rabbis were realistic about human limitations and that if a person has difficulty concentrate, 
uh, concentrating, it's perfectly reasonable to change topics and mode of study, even if it's to a lesser mode, because that might, might be what a person needs to do at that time in order to be effective. And being overly perfectionistic and difficult with oneself is not a good idea.